next year's race, where Jimmy Johnson did not win, most people might be surprised who came away with that victory. It was Casey Kane from Hendrick Motor Speedway. also at Charlotte, he has four wins, and on that evening, that was his fourth, as he has seven top five finishes. And you can see from that race, Casey King. Meanwhile, you look at Jimmy Johnson. He's been impressive, as I mentioned. Six wins. A.C. Kane, and in the fifth position, was Kurt Busch. He won a segment uh, in the race, and also Kyle Busch. And they were very disappointed uh, after the race as uh, they thought that they should have won uh, the All-Star race as Kurt Busch uh, several years ago won for Penske Racing. And also uh, Kyle Busch, he has um, compiled a very... Uh, ...this Sunday at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600 live on Fox... And we'll have to see uh, who uh, will come away with that victory. If you look at the points, Jimmy Johnson, he's out in front once again. He's a very uh, dedicated uh, this season, uh, like he has been in years. Hall of Fame, and I think uh, when it's all race ever, going past uh, the King Richard Petty. As you look at the standings, it's Jimmy Johnson in the top spot, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, who has three victories on the season in his first year for Joe Gibbs Racing. Johnson has two wins. Eighth, Kyle Busch. Number nine, Eric Amarola. 10, Kevin Harvick, Paul Menard in the 11th position, and Jeff Gordon in the 12th position. And he's hoping uh, once again that he can uh, make it in the chase as uh, last year he was in the 12th spot and uh, Kyle uh, Bush was a couple points uh, behind and he did not make the chase. And Kyle Bush was very, very disappointed.
they just wrapped up the regular season against James Madison, took two out of three games, and senior D.J. Long from Sussex Central, the former quarterback of four coach John Wells, he went on a full uh, scholarship uh, to uh, the University of Delaware. It was his passion. Uh, baseball was his first love. And he's had a remarkable uh, career. And uh, it will conclude probably in the next uh, couple days. They have a big uh, matchup uh, tomorrow evening at uh, 7 o'clock. They're the number three seed as uh, they will be matched up once again against the number six seed. It's going to be James Madison. And if they win... They will advance to Thursday uh, night's game against William and Mary, the number two seed. Now, if they lose, they will play tomorrow night in the loser's bracket. So we'll have to see if uh, D.J. Long can continue uh, his uh, remarkable career. His uh, freshman season, he uh, had a stellar year, had over a 30-game uh, hitting streak uh, as a freshman, played uh, shortstop uh, for uh, Sussex Central, and uh, when he went to the University of Delaware, he made the switch uh, to second base, and uh, he's uh, really excelled. Now we'll have to see if uh, D.J. Long will be uh, drafted in the baseball draft in June, and he will join, if he does, some of the local prospects uh, recently. Jamie Jarman comes to mind, a second-round uh, uh, star from Indian River. He uh, led uh, his t football team to the Division II state uh, championship at Delaware State. Also, you had uh, Derek Gibson, just a uh, couple miles uh, down the road from uh, the Seaford Blue Jays, a second-round uh, pick from the Boston Red Sox. As the Orioles, just a couple years ago, they were interested in, in Derek Gibson, but instead they selected uh, in the second round, early in that second round, Xavier Avery, the outfielder, who's uh, also uh, had some uh, playing time in the major leagues, and right now he's in Triple uh, Triple A Norfolk. But uh, Derek Gibson has not made uh, the big show uh, yet, but uh, one day I, I think uh, he will. And if you look uh, at uh, probably the all-time uh, best athlete uh, to come out uh, of Delaware, uh, baseball-wise, you have to look at the Lino De Shields. So uh, he was a former uh, first-round draft pick uh, from uh, the Montreal Expos back uh, in the early 90s. And uh, we'll have to see if D.J. Long uh, joins that select group. But I don't think he's going to go in the first round. I think uh, maybe in the 23rd, 24th. But he's a good ball player. He uh, has a good work ethic. And I think uh, D.J. Long will uh, be selected. And hopefully he will uh, be uh, live at Jimmy's Grill uh, on the sports show as uh, he has agreed uh, to do the interview. So excited at some point uh, to have him live here at Jimmy's Grill in Ridgeville. As I mentioned, uh, the uh, tournament, uh, it's the Colonial Athletic Association Championship uh, Games. They are taking place. It will start uh, tomorrow live in Virginia, and uh, good tickets uh, still remain if you want to go down there and watch uh, D.J. Long's uh, final uh, conference uh, games. Also, uh, in uh, baseball news, I'm a Baltimore Oriole fan uh, for many years. I've gone uh, to Camden Yards and also to uh, Memorial Stadium. And uh, one of the highlights, I got to see the Bash brothers, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco. And yes, uh, both uh, players, uh, I guess they were good because uh, they used uh, steroids. But back uh, way back, I didn't know it. And it was just uh, fun to watch them. As uh, at the time, they could uh, just uh, crush uh, the baseball like uh, nobody else. And uh, it was uh, fun to, uh, to uh, go to Memorial Stadium. And I think uh, Camden Yards is a little better than that ballpark. I just wish they had a retractable roof. So if it rains, that uh, the fans would be protected, and I would get to see a baseball game every evening. But uh, getting back to this uh, current uh, Oriole Club... They're in a six-game losing skid. And in the ninth inning, they brought in the closer, Jim Johnson. Last year, he recorded 51 saves. And heading into last night's game, he had 14 saves on the season. But he had already blown uh, two consecutive saves. He gets uh, in the ninth inning. He's protecting a one-run um, one lead, one, uh, lead, 
and he gives up a home run to Travis Hafner, the ex-Cleveland Indian, and he belts uh, the home run, ties it up 4-4 four to four in the ninth as he had a 4-3 lead, and Jim Johnson could not protect it. His third blown save in a row. Instead, in the tenth, they brought in the former Texas Ranger, and he throws about uh, 100 miles an hour, about 98, 99, something like that. Very close to uh, Justin Verlander, uh, the pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, but doesn't have uh, the great movement or curveball. And Pedro Strope, he's the guy I'm talking about, came in for the Baltimore Orioles, and he gave up two runs as the Baltimore Orioles lost another one to the New York Yankees and Joe Girardi, as uh, they do not have Derek Jeter. They do not have Alex Rodriguez, and they did get back uh, last night to Curtis uh, Granderson as uh, they're still without uh, Mark Teixeira, the local uh, product uh, from Maryland, who did not want to sign uh, with the Orioles uh, a couple years ago. He uh, took the big deal, about $180 million with the New York Yankees, about a 10-year deal, and the Orioles offered about $160 million. It was close. But uh, he said uh, no thanks uh, to the Orioles. And uh, Mark Tashir, a good ball player, but he's had a lot of uh, injuries, a lot of uh, ankle injuries, arm injuries, and he's been uh, injury prone uh, throughout uh, his tenure with the New York Yankees. Game number two uh, tonight at Camden Yards, as uh, they have Miguel Gonzalez uh, on the mound, as uh, he's recovering uh, from an injury, just coming off fresh uh, off the disabled list, disabled list, and Phil Hughes. The former phenom for the Yankees, he's on the mound as uh, the Orioles try to break uh, that losing skid as uh, Phil Hughes has a high ERA. So uh, hopefully tonight, Manny Machado, you'll have uh, Chris Davis, Matt Wieters. Hopefully uh, everybody will get a hit to J.J. Hardy, who's uh, had several uh, home runs in the last uh, several games, can uh, connect tonight. And uh, the Baltimore Orioles uh, need uh, this victory as uh, they will soon be going uh, on the road against the Toronto Bears in this uh, homestand to turn it around. And uh, they have uh, two games remaining against the New York Yankees before taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. We're going to take another commercial break as we're live at Jimmy's Grill in Bridgeville. You're listening to the Anthony Joseph Sports Show.
And welcome back live at Jimmy's Grill in Bridgeville. I'm Anthony Joseph. Now I'm going to talk about some Philadelphia Eagles news. As Elena Johnson just recently did an interview for Comcast, as he was talking about being on the second team. He's the first round draft pick, fourth overall this year, 2013, for the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, in practice uh, for first year, uh, head coach uh, Chip Gal Kelly uh, out of uh, Oregon uh, University, he is on the second team, and uh, I was surprised uh, that uh, Lena Johnson is uh, not uh, on the first team because if you look uh, at the uh, other uh, two uh, draft picks uh, ahead of him, offensive uh, tackles, uh, the number one uh, draft pick uh, overall, Eric Fisher, for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the number two for the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars, uh, Luke Jokel, they are going to be uh, already uh, practicing uh, on the first team, getting a lot of reps. Uh, Jokel's getting a lot of praise uh, that he uh, is uh, really uh, going to be uh, an impressive uh, interior lineman. And uh, they're reminiscing about the good old days when they had Tony Pizzelli, uh, the uh, offensive uh, lineman. He was about 6'8", and uh, Pizzelli uh, was uh, very uh, dominating against uh, nose guards and other defensive uh, players and that's why he went to, to uh, several uh, Pro Bowls but uh, he had a lot of injuries but getting back uh, to uh, Lane Johnson uh, being on the second team kind of a surprise but we'll have to see uh, what uh, Chip uh, Kelly's philosophy is does he play a lot of the rookies uh, right now if you look at the quarterback battle it's between uh, Michael Vick and also second year uh, quarterback uh, Nick Foles from Arizona and Nick Foles does have a legitimate shot to at the quarterback position. Michael Vick said he's going to start, but uh, over and over again, when they interview uh, Chip Kelly, it's going to be uh, between the two of them. He has not named uh, Vick uh, the starter yet, so time will tell if uh, Michael Vick will be the starting quarterback uh, against the Washington Redskins in week number one on ESPN Monday Night Football. We'll have to see, but I like to give the edge to Nick Foles, as I thought uh, last year. Uh, he's not very uh, quick. Uh, he doesn't have uh, quick feet, but he does have a quick release, and he has a strong arm. He's very accurate, and uh, if I was building a team as the general manager, I would uh, have him and tab him as the starting quarterback uh, this year. And we'll have to see uh, what the USC uh, quarterback, uh, Matt Barkley, uh, does. I think uh, that was a, a gem. Uh, to start uh, the fourth round as they traded up with the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars to uh, secure that pick, first pick in the fourth round because the Jaguars, they could have used a quarterback. But uh, Matt Barkley uh, in, uh, U uh, at USC in his collegiate days, he had uh, big days, throwing over 400 yards uh, several times, four or five touchdowns. He had Robert Woods, now the Buffalo Bills uh, wide receiver. He was a second-round uh, draft pick. Marquise Lee, next year uh, he'll be a first-round draft pick. He had a lot of weapons, but what slowed uh, Barkley down was he did not have a very good offensive line, and he got injured against UCLA, and that really uh, dropped his stock. I think uh, in a year he will sit and uh, learn behind uh, Foles or Michael Vick, and I think uh, he will be uh, the future for Chip Kelly, and I think uh, that's why uh, he was drafted. We'll have to see uh, what happens uh, with uh, Nick Foles. Maybe he's the starting quarterback, and then they could trade to uh, trade him for maybe a first-round draft pick or a second-round draft pick. As in the NFL, you can never have enough quarterbacks, and uh, it does not seem that uh, um, if you're an NFL quarterback, um, you will not uh, go uh, without a job very, very long. As uh, Alex uh, Smith lost his job uh, last year uh, to Colin Kaepernick for the San Francisco 49ers, but uh, he was traded in the offseason to Andy Reid, and he's now going to be the starting quarterback for Coach Reid's team. For uh, we wrap this up, tomorrow night we're going to be live at uh, Heritage Shores uh, getting some interviews that, that we uh, will uh, play uh, at some point on Catch It Live. And uh, tomorrow night, you have uh, some big names, as you have uh, Gary Clark uh, from uh, the Washington uh, Redskins. Uh, he's going to uh, be there. Dave Johnson from Masson, the former Baltimore Oriole pitcher, and his uh, son is Steve Johnson. 
He just uh, started a game uh, for the Baltimore Orioles about a week ago, and he was uh, demoted back to Triple A Norfolk as uh, he had a uh, he's battling an injury uh, early on, and uh, it'll be good to see uh, Dave Johnson as you can catch him usually uh, on uh, Masson every uh, Monday through Friday. I think about uh, five o'clock with Tom Davis, and uh, he really uh, does a nice job, and it'll be good uh, to uh, see him. Tomorrow night, Paul Blair is going to be in attendance, the former Baltimore Oriole, Tippy Martinez, and also some other big names. You want to make sure that you check us out uh, on the website and uh, see some of these uh, big interviews uh, that we're going to have live at Heritage Shores as it's a two-day event uh, at uh, the Heritage Shores a Country Club. It's called the uh, Golf Classic. It's the annual Horsey uh, Family uh, Foundation uh, Golf Classic. It starts uh, on uh, Wednesday with a meet and greet, and then it concludes uh, on uh, Thursday with, uh, with the golf outing with all the celebrities that are attending. Well, I'm all out of time. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you join me every Tuesday live at Jimmy's Grill in Bridgeville.